too. So when severe weather is forecast, it's not only tornadoes we need to worry about. High winds can be just as damaging. Meteorologist Reynolds Wolf talks about high wind safety. Now across a lot of the southeast, this front is coming through without much moisture and it's going to bring the wind. So that makes things look different too, the pattern changing. But for now, I mean, we are going to see temperatures cooling down. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Wednesday morning front lines begin in Cincinnati. Rain, snow and even a little crew can expect. Steph? All right, coming on Thursday and Friday look great. Yes, good morning, everybody. Thanks for waking up with us early on AMH Too Early. I'm meteorologist Jordan Steele. And I'm meteorologist Jen Carfagno. Let's check out your top stories to see how the weather will impact your day. All right, well, let's get into That's the thing, right? It's just a shock to the system compared to where we've been in the 80s already for so many of us this month, like across Kansas and Missouri. We had snow. This is the snow that fell. Bigger amounts in the mountains of Colorado, Wyoming, Rapid City, big, big totals there. But we saw a decent snow accumulating all throughout parts of Illinois in Indiana, Fort Wayne. I saw some spots around you getting close to five inches of snow up towards Toledo, Ottawa Hills. You had close to seven inches of snowfall, so it's been impressive, right? Here's where we are right now. Watching the front, it's behind it where we are getting that stripe of snow heading up through northwest Pennsylvania, western New York, Buffalo, Pittsburgh. You've got some snow that just started being reported at the airport there. Um, Nashville, you never did get any flakes. I checked jobs anyway at the airport, but I'm sure some of you might have seen a flake or two. Parkersburg, we are in the mid 30s we are seeing some of that heavier snow and it's all about this band of heavier snow that um, when it comes down at these bigger rates it's got that chance to accumulate right if it's a lighter snow it's not going to stick the ground is pretty warm but when it comes down quick it refrigerates the ground and you do get uh, that snow able to accumulate here's Pittsburgh and you can see just coming in now we're going to get a quick burst of some snow bridges overpasses that's the kind of you know, driving situation that could become slushy and slippery and Buffalo and Erie we've got snow starting to come down temperatures now at or below freezing so be ready for slick spots on the roads i know it's april but like we saw yesterday it can stick and we will look for some slick spots burlington it is coming your way as well jordan yeah you know it is not a uh, it's exciting kind of right april snow isn't exciting as a november snow um but we got a couple of inches one to two coming down it's going to be coming down in a pretty quick burst that's when i think we get the thing you know the biggest accumulation when you get in that heavier snow band winter weather advisories are up here from northern parts of ohio but then through this evening across western and northern New York and the northern parts of Vermont, New Hampshire, and uh, a little bit of Maine. The thing is, the low pressure itself lifts pretty far north. So this time, Worcester, Massachusetts, you're not getting the snow. I know last week you were cleaning up from, what, nearly seven inches of snow. Watch how this plays out. Syracuse, Rochester, Burlington, Adirondacks, um, maybe even the northern parts of the Mohawk Valley. We've got some snow coming in today. But then the low pressure itself lifts north that, you know, that... Uh, as it goes, the front pushes offshore, taking all of the moisture with it. Then the cold air comes in and sweeps in all across the Northeast. And there actually could be a little bit of lake effect tomorrow here across parts of western and central New York. So we're getting into that for your Thursday. We are going to be watching for most of the snowfall to be about a one to three inch kind of thing. You've got to go pretty far north to get to the five to eight or eight to 12. You can see that's all the way up there into northern Vermont and New Hampshire. And the mountains will help too, Jordan. Yeah, but still, that's a good amount. Tomorrow marks the 51st celebration of Earth Day, and all week the Weather Channel and our Pattern Climate Unit are introducing you to people working to save the planet. In our Faces of Change series, we introduce you to Americans doing what is right for the environment and their hometowns. Emily Darchuk is revolutionizing the alcohol industry by mixing sustainable, tasty tonics with no chasers. We go to Portland, Oregon for her story. Interesting. I love this series. Now, tomorrow we go into the workshop of artist and environmentalist Brandon Ballinger. He shows us how his exhibits are promoting eco actions. Jordan. All right. Well, the second round. Larger, bigger storms actually by this weekend. We're back to severe weather risks as we look ahead to your Friday and then Saturday. We've got that chance as well. It's a zone that stretches from Texas and Oklahoma all the way into Louisiana and Mississippi. Things are changing. I know it's cold, it's dry, it feels winter like, it's snowing for so many of you um, today, but we're back to spring like weather by Friday. Here comes our system, our low pressure, where we've got that warm sector in between the cold front and the warm front. The dry line will be a factor too. Lots of things to call lift and stability returning. We we're going to have the moisture come back. Air that's going to be easy to lift is going to be moving across this area. And then we watch that all move into the parts of the south as we get into Saturday, the southeast. We've got now southeast Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama. Again, watching that warm sector for a zone of potential severe weather. We've got on Saturday, I would say I-20 and Point South is where those storms could be severe. And we are watching this area for very heavy rain as well, which we'll talk more about the potential for flooding. We want to give a good morning shout out 
out to you all right now. Welcome back to AMHQ Early. I'm meteorologist Jordan Steele. And I'm meteorologist Jen Carfag. Now, you, you know, think spring has played a really bad joke on all of us because the last few days have just felt like it's the middle of December. Yeah. We've got the Rockies, Central U.S., the Northeast, all been dealing with snow and some really cold temperatures. Yeah, and just the snow, winter, fighting back. The Midwest, um, from here into Ohio, all the way up into New England, northern New England, we're going to see the snowfall. That's where we have the winter weather advisories. Now, here's where we're going to see the snow this morning. You know, we're still seeing some flakes around northeast Ohio. That'll be wrapping up in the next couple of hours. We see western and central New York. We stay in it through at least midday into northern parts of New York State, up into the Adirondacks. We're going to be watching for snow up into northern Vermont, and extreme northern New Hampshire, and western and northern Maine. But you notice that places like Worcester, where we got close to seven inches of snow last week, we're not going to get snow today. So we see the cold air coming after the moisture moves out off the coast. And that cold air is going to blow in on some strong winds. So there'll be a wind chill factor. Winds are just going to be strong, and maybe the winds themselves could create some damage. And here's a look at just how much of everything we're going to get. Precip wise, rainfall here probably less than an inch. We need the precip. We've got a lot of dry conditions here over the northeast. The snowfall, you got to go up to the mountains to get the biggest five to eight inches. Um, but I think, you know, even three to five is kind of a big deal for April. We'll be setting some late, latest, biggest snowfalls, Jordan, yeah, records, I think. No, totally. And you know yeah. what, since we... Fire concerns, whether it's fire watches or red flag warnings in parts of the south. One spot we're watching is the Atlanta area. And temperatures are going to be hovering in the mid-50s. So we don't see a huge hot day right ahead, but we see a really windy, dry day ahead. And that's going to be the problem. We haven't had much rain either. Everything is dried out, right? Um, all of the vegetation, if you haven't been watering, certainly water watching in some of the natural areas. So wind advisory is up. The red flag warnings are up here across eastern parts of Georgia, all of South Carolina, the entire state, and a good chunk of North Carolina. Cities like Columbia and Charlotte and Augusta and Greenville and Spartanburg, all under this red flag warning for that fire danger risk today. And we watched the relative humidities to see, you know, is how much of a risk is there going to be? We've got the wind, and that's going to help dry out things a little bit more. But as the temperature goes up and the dew point doesn't really change, if anything, it drops a little bit today. This is dry dry air moving in, we are going to see those relative humidities really drop off this afternoon, dropping below 30%, probably getting close to about 25%. And so that leads to that fire risk. That's why we do have those red flag warnings that are up. Once we get later in the day, that, that I think that concern will ease just as you know, temperatures come down and humidities go up, Jordan. Right. Well, it is still full on. We set some records already for like the biggest, latest snow in the season. Now, the same system put down a slab of slushy snow from the Rockies into the Midwest. The highest 24-hour total, 16 inches in Allen Spark, Colorado, just northwest of Denver. New this morning, the sudden swing from spring warmth to snow is giving everybody a case of winter whiplash. Just chase the above average air yeah. and, just, and, and go, go to where it's going to be warm. Now, it is going to be warming up later this week, and that's going to bring back the severe threat across parts of the southern plains and Gulf Coast. So we got to talk about that. Places like Oklahoma City, as cold as you are this morning, we've got storms coming back. Mobile, Alabama, we've got storms coming back. All parameters are in play, even the possibility of tornadoes. So I want to step through what is coming as we get into the end of the week. It's Friday time frame when we see things change back to spring-like. Right now, where we're at, We've got dry air all the way down to the Gulf Coast here. It feels much more like fall does it, than it does spring. But by the time we get into Thursday and Friday, we get the southerly flow. We get the moisture returning. The instability comes back with all of this. And we really get into a classic spring-like pattern where here comes our low pressure. We have a warm sector in between the cold front and then over in the warm front. And then the dry line will be a feature that we'll have to watch for lift. And speaking of lift, with those dew points going back up, that air is going to be more buoyant. We'll have the chance for thunderstorms, possible severe weather in this red zone from Texas all the way over into Louisiana and then even Mississippi. So big hail likely. We're isolating that area where we could see that. We'll watch that dry line again for instigating some of those big super south thunderstorms. And then all hazards Friday night watching over here across Louisiana and then over into Mississippi as well. And that will include the overnight. So I want to give you the early heads up. Make sure you have a way to get your warnings and something that will wake you up. Now as we look at the forecast into Saturday, here comes our low, tracks through. Here comes our front. There'll be a warm sector too. 
We will watch for the risk of storms going severe. Um, areas along I-20 and south will be the zone to watch for that. There's also going to be a lot of rain coming in, though, too. Very heavy rainfall will be a big part of the story into the south and east. So here comes our dip in the jet stream then early next week. And the pattern changes dramatically as we get into next week and return more to what you might expect in the springtime, where how you might expect severe, severe weather setup. We're going to watch that as we see a dip in our jet stream coming in, um, a return to moisture. Again, this gets into next week and the winds get stronger. Everything sort of looks a little more amped up, if you will, for that risk. Steph. Well, soaking rain opportunity you have. Yeah, this is, this yeah. is kind of it. Yeah. All right. Well, obviously, you got a great shot. They've had some good weather, actually, up in Alaska, yeah. too. It's been warm, one of your earliest, warmest starts uh, to the, the midnight sun season, if you will. Now, we go down to Florida, where it's been raining, and we've got another day of rain, especially today in South Florida. So, checking off what we got. Lingering storms. We'll have some gusty winds with some of them, and, of course, the heavy rainfall and the risk of some uh, ponding of water on the roadways. Right now, Fort Myers, we've got thunderstorms right overhead. Um, we've got some showers well south of Miami down across the northern keys key Largo getting into some showers in the vicinity but there's not a lot on land right now watch what happens through the afternoon even the morning we see a couple of showers possible thunderstorms move in right along alligator alley some of these could be a little punchy with some stronger winds watching that move all throughout South Florida today and even all the way up you can see to Fort Pierce um, and Fort Lauderdale we'll have some showers West Palm in there as well watching for some showers and storms but then once we get through tonight we'll finally see the front come through and see improving weather the northeast a different story we'll talk more about your forecast for travel today we got everything going on that we do too. including um, well yeah, there'll be some time to spend inside maybe uh contemplating your next move if you're looking for something inspiring the weather once we get through everything going on today tomorrow quiets down but then friday we get back into storms across the southern plains the rain spreads east sunday that heads to the northeast oh and look at the weather I mean, the weather looks better in jacksonville today as we talked about now the front this one has been stuck in florida for days it it's still in South Florida, but it's the last day. So it comes all the way through today. Some showers and storms this morning right around Fort Myers, Port Charlotte. We're watching you. And then there's more. I mean, as we get through the later morning hours, storms stretching all the way from west to east up to West Palm, eventually up towards Fort Pierce. We still can see a few more flying through today. But again, this is all sinking south by this evening. And so things do look much better as we get into tomorrow. Can't say it's going to completely dry up, but, you know, we won't have this deluge every single day like we've had. Some shower activity remaining over the the Florida Keys late tonight. Steph and Chip. All right, President Biden's rainy, gloomy yeah. day because it gives you license to just not do anything, right? Not go outside, enjoy the weather. You can just stay inside and watch TV, watch the Weather Channel all day. No worries. Um, and Jim talked about the headlines in the south, and that's where the most active weather will be. But we get the clouds and the showers all the way through the Midwest, the Ohio Valley, the Northeast. So, you know, even though it's cold and snowy and everything else now, it's not like we get a great weekend behind this. We need the moisture, soil moisture running pretty dry actually all across this area. So there's that. Um, but we bring it in, just timing is terrible if you did want to get outside. Here come the showers up into parts of Wisconsin where this morning roads are slippery and slushy because of uh, the wintry weather that we've been having. It's just plain old rain, though, but it's rain that comes in across lower Michigan into Ohio. We see eventually the northeast gets all of this by the time we get into your Sunday showers. Do overspread the area. For some reason, the, the shield left the map, but let me, let me tell you, we've got some rain coming our way as we get into Sunday. So for places like Chicago, we, you know, we keep the clouds around on Friday. Temperatures do rebound, so there's that. We're not as cold as we've been, but we see the rain Friday night and continuing into Saturday morning. Now, for Detroit, we get the rain Friday night, and it sticks around all day on Saturday, and then Saturday night here. Still a few showers, guys.